You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. begin. Recording. Back to scene one. We open on a wide valley, the Alps in the background, as a ragtag army of men in brass helmets descend, followed by a bunch of elephants. In the foreground is their leader, Hannibal. Make that a herd of elephants. No, no, strike that. A thundering herd of elephants. Next shot. I need a drink. I say, I need... Oh. Yes? Greg? Uh, <clears throat> you have reached the home of Gregory West. At the tone, Cut it please out, leave... West. I know you're there. For one thing, you don't have an answering machine. For another, I can hear you sweating. Hello, Sammy. You know what day it is? It's Monday. You were supposed to have the script on my desk this afternoon. Mm, oh, that, yes. Um, my typist is running a little behind schedule. Your typist? Well, you know I don't use a typewriter. Well, so get a word processor or a laptop. Never. Dictation is the only way. Helps me get the dialogue right. What's your number? Hmm? Who? Your typist. I'll send a messenger. Not until I have a chance to look it over. Make any last-minute corrections. The network wants pages, Greg. They don't have to be Perfect. Just give me a couple of more days. I can't stall them much longer. They want to shoot Hannibal's animals in the spring. Well, they doubt me? They doubt their own grandmother if they had her under contract. They've got a lot of writing on this. Well, you tell them I'm not some Hollywood hack. I'm a legitimate writer. They're lucky to have my services. And you're lucky to have a six-figure deal. This isn't Broadway. It's TV. And you've got a mortgage to pay off. I'm aware of that, Sammy. Oh, I shouldn't have answered the phone. One time I do. Is it Harold Prince? Hmm? Is it the Theatre Guild? No, it's my agent with dialogue out of a Bud Schulberg novel. Bud who? Look, the script will be ready when it's ready. Do they want it fast or do they want it good? Hmm? Ask them that, would you please? They want it tomorrow. That's what they want. I'm telling Bye, you. Bye, Sammy. We'll talk in the morning. Oh, my. <laughs> now I do need that drink. Mary, did you hear what I said? Yes, darling? Ah, there you are. I was wondering... Scotch and water? How did you guess? I think I know you by now. Relax, Gregory. You deserve a break. How right you are. Sit on the couch. I'll massage your temples before you go back to work. Ah, what a fine idea. Is the drink all right? Mm. Perfect. As always. There. Now close your eyes. Mm. Doesn't that feel better? I swear, Mary. You have... Oh, magic fingertips. Mm. The least I can do for such a talented man. That brain of yours must get overheated, working hour after hour, morning till night. I couldn't have said it better myself. Oh, yes, you could. You're a genius with words. I know. Oh, Mary, Mary. Yes, Gregory? Hold me. It would be an honor. Mm. Who's that? Hmm? Outside the window, I thought I saw... No! Gregory! Not Victoria, she... Gregory? She can't be home yet! Gregory! How dare you!
the home office of Mr. Gregory West, noted playwright, and now a resident of the Hollywood Hills, a quiet, thoughtful man, even a bit shy, and at the moment, very happy, despite the fact that he is over deadline. His latest project? A script assignment taken to ensure that his household remains secure, despite the occasional fickleness of drama critics. The other ingredients of that household? There's Mary, warm, affectionate, devoted, the ideal companion for someone who values peace of mind. And the final ingredient, Mrs. Gregory West. In a moment, she's going to learn the secret of her husband's success, a method of creative writing taught only in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, A World of His Own. Starring Charles Shaughnessy with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Gregory! Oh! Is she gone? Mm, yeah, for the moment. Are you cold? What? The yeah, air, it's, it's chilly this evening. It was. Shall I light the fire? Not if you're with me. You're so lovely. Oh, Gregory. Uh, don't worry just yet. Oh, Mary. Gregory! Unlock this door immediately. I'm sorry. Greg, not again. I, I have to, Mary. But why? You don't know what she's capable of. No, you have a woman in there. Open up. No, Greg. What else can I do? I warn you, Gregory. Oh, my. Are you so frightened of her? She can make my life miserable if she chooses. All right, then. If you must. Do you hear me, Gregory? Are you deaf? Uh, be right there. Don't think you can hide her from me. Uh, what's that, dear? Don't think you can let her out the window, either. Gregory! Ah, I thought that was you. Where is she? Hmm? Who, my dear? Not behind the drapes. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Under the desk? What are you going on about, Victoria? You know perfectly well. I suppose you let her out the window. But the window doesn't open, remember? Then where? Who? You little worm, you know who. What have you I done with her? Know. Where what? did she You're... go? Where? Please, stop. My glasses. A cozy fire. Your smoking jacket. Hmm. Oh, only because it's comfortable. You, you know I don't smoke. Of course you don't. In order to smoke, you'd have to heat up. And you've never risen above room temperature. Sit down. Let's, let's talk this over. Have you installed a secret door in here? No, dear. The studies as it's always been. A place of seclusion for my work. For your work. A monkey business, you mean? What are you doing? I'm arranging my notes. Notes? Those are tapes. No, oh, you know I prefer to dictate, dear. I'm not your dear anymore, you libertine. Who's a libertine? Do you intend to stand there and deny it? <laughs> deny what? That you had a woman in here. Victoria, I never meant Liar. To... Cheat. Fraud. Victoria! If you force me to do it, Gregory, I'll have this room torn down. Panel by panel, board by board. Why? Don't toy with me. <sighs> Who's toying? Then you must think I'm handicapped. What? Lacking in all my faculties. The vital functions, like sight. You think I'm blind? Of course I don't. Then how can you refuse to admit it? I stood outside that window and saw the two of you on that sofa there. Don't. Zip it. Shall I describe her to you, Gregory? 
Her brown hair, the simple black dress, the pearl necklace. How she handed you the drink. If I'm not mistaken, this drink right here. I... I don't recall who made that. You don't? Your private bartender, maybe? In our own home, Gregory. Our own home. That drab, ugly little creature. She's not. Aha! Uh -huh. How was your day, dear? Hmm? You uh, went to a movie, didn't you? Was it a good one? Apparently not. Oh, well, they can't all be works of art. Didn't expect me home so soon, did you? Thought I'd go out to dinner afterwards. I didn't say that. I've had my eye on you for some time now. Oh, how flattering. You thought you fooled me, didn't you? Why, no! You know you can't lie to me. You thought I'd never suspect the real reason you kept sending me away from the house. Have to be alone to work. The famous playwright. Famous philanderer is more like it. You do me an injustice. Oh, do I? All right. Out with it. Who is she? Victoria. Dear. Don't you dear me. Ow! And don't touch me. At least try to understand. Oh, I understand perfectly. But you don't. Why don't you enlighten me, then? There's no other woman in my life. There certainly isn't. Not anymore. Because you don't have a life. <sighs> How can I explain it to you? That's the question of the evening. How? Well, I'm waiting. I'm a very patient person. I'm not going anywhere. Go ahead. Take your time. Choose your words carefully. Because I intend to report each and every one of them to my lawyer. Now, that won't be necessary. I'll be the judge of that. Victoria. Victoria. All right, then. You recall my play, The Fury of Night, hmm? Dear? The one that made my reputation? It won a Tony Award? Oh, then there was interest from Hollywood and we moved out here? I'm listening. What about it? Well, you remember the character of Philip Wainwright? He was the first character that I was ever really successful with. The critics said he lived on stage, not a, a collection of mannerisms. He, he breathed, he... What's her name? What? Her name. What do you call her? Fifi? Foofy? Or do you just call her whenever you feel like it? Mary, but... Mary! How common. <laughs> She's not common. Oh, you mean she has hidden talents. I'll bet. Does she cater to your every need? Drain off your tensions before they have a chance to build up. Victoria, don't. I'm trying to explain. Then go ahead. I'm all ears. All right. You know I've spoken many times of how fictional characters seem to come to life for me. Such vivid life that they begin to determine their own actions. As the author, I may have some particular lines and moves planned for them, but they simply won't do it. They become so strong that they begin to take over the story. I'm not interested in a lecture on writing. You artistic types are all alike, full of mumbo-jumbo about feelings and moonbeams. It's all smoke and mirrors, a cover, a front for self-indulgence, wish fulfillment, laziness. I don't know what you'd do if you had a real job to go to. If your delicate sensibilities could stand up Victoria, to... Victoria, I'm asking you to bear with me. Bear? I've borne you too long. And now it's over. Finny, kaput. Ten four, over and out. Wave bye-bye, mark it and strike it. But this is important. Philip Wainwright. He was the first one of my characters ever to behave like this. Like what? Like you? With a complete lack of morals? With duplicitousness? Duplicity? What? The, the word is duplicity. Is it? Well, I've got a word for you. No, I must finish this, so please don't interrupt. Now, no matter what I tried to make him do in the service of the story, he balked, flatly refused to take direction, wouldn't accept my choices any longer. This is ridiculous. He was real, alive, do you hear? Alive. With a, a will all his own. We're off the subject. No, we're not. This is the subject. 
Philip Wainwright was alive. So much so that one night while I was working right here in my office, he came walking in through the door. My God. You're delusional. Victoria, believe me. He did. He walked right in and, and took a chair in front of the fireplace. A real flesh and blood man. Not just words anymore. And I had created him. What are you doing? I think psychiatry is next on the agenda. No, put the phone down. I'm telling you the truth, Victoria. Characters from my plays began to come to life. I saw them. I talked with them. I shook their hands. And made love to them? Yes! I, I mean, no! You want me to put the phone down? How's this? Right on your fingers. Ow! Get out of my way. Look, hear me out. You know how I work, how I dictate my dialogue and descriptions into the tape recorder. The lazy man's way to riches. I can describe any character at all into it, and and now, if I do it well enough, truly enough, the character will come to life. Real life, Victoria. Listen to yourself. They don't even have to be characters in my scripts anymore. They can be any kind of characters I want. You belong in an asylum. You told me that you saw Mary in here, didn't you? Oh, I saw her. Then how did she leave? I don't know. But I trust my own eyes before I trust you. Well, think about it. She didn't use the window. I and you know very well that there's no secret door in here. The magician reveals the tricks of the trade. I'll tell you how she left. Because I want you to understand. Look in the fireplace. The what? The grating. Go ahead, look. I'm supposed to believe that she went up the chimney? Well, in a sense, uh, but not the way you mean. Here, here I'll show you. See this? What is it? A melted cassette tape. Is that what you do with your so-called notes? Burn them? Only on occasion. When I have to get rid of something in a hurry, or someone. The tape I had recorded her on, I threw it into the fire just before you entered the study, and she was gone. Poof! Just like that. Uncreated. Look, if you'll come over here, you can see what... I've heard enough. Wait! I'm leaving. I'm telling you the truth. Get out of my way. Where are you going? I'm going to have you committed. You, look, you've got to believe me, Victoria. What do you think you're doing? Trying to save our marriage. By locking the door? Don't waste your time. It's so simple. Look, I could describe a cat or a dog or any kind of character you wanted. Uh, but I assume you'd rather see Mary. Besides, I've created her so often that she's readily available. Oh, is she? Give me that key. No, not yet. Recording. Uh, her name is Mary. She's 36, 5 foot 3 inches tall, simply built, brown hair, fair complexion. The key. On the surface, now. a plain, quite ordinary female, yet with that quality of inner loveliness which gives her woman real beauty. If you won't give it to a, me, I'll a take tender, it. A tender, gentle woman, an understanding woman. As she wears a simple black dress, a single strand of pearls at her throat. I'm warning very you. Very little makeup, her hair arranged simply. There. She's coming up I the front walk it. now. She's crossing the porch. She's opening the front door. Greg, someone's in the house. Closing it? Walking down the hall? Who? Good evening, Mrs. West. Well? She... She's real. How did you do that? Do what? Bring her here. On cue. Don't you understand? I described her on the tape. <laughs> you heard me. But why, Greg? Why do you bring me here now? Because... <sighs> it's a bit tricky to explain. Try. 
Uh, come in, Mary. Thank you. I'd love to. She asked you a question. I'm trying to think of the best way to put it. Uh, g give me a moment, Mary. You do know each other. Oh, yes. Your husband's a wonderful man. What do you want here? There's nothing to be afraid of, Mrs. West. I'm here because it's Gregory's wish. It's not mine to doubt him. Doubt him? You mean you don't? I'm sure he has his reasons. There. See? Well, Victoria? Do you believe me now? This is some kind of plot. You did let her out of here through a secret door somewhere. Behind the bookcase? I'll find it. Then you tell me some fool story about... about characters who come to life and walk around as big as you please. It's not a plot, I assure you. Not a very clever one, that's obvious. You lock the door and pretend to make her real. And she slips around from the backyard and comes in through the front door and tries to make me think oh, she's... Oh, no. That's not what happened. Not at all. I swear. You're trying to drive me insane. You want to have me committed. <laughs> I only did it because you said you were gonna have me committed. Oh, no. You want to get rid of me so you'll have our property all to yourself. So you can share it with this... this... Nothing of the kind. I, I only wanted to show you. Yeah, it, it's a demonstration. Greg? W what is it? Is that why you brought me here? Not because you wanted to see me, but only to show her? Uh, Mary, try to understand. I am trying. Only... Victoria's my wife. Not anymore. Not after this diabolic conspiracy. Oh, come on, Victoria. Can't I do anything right? That's something I've been wondering for years. You haven't answered me, Greg. Answered what? Is that all I am to you? A parlor trick? Something to show off? Go ahead. Lie some more. Victoria, do you honestly believe that? I'm... Yes. And that's the only thing I believe. I hope you two are very happy together. Here we go again. Don't leave because of me. I wouldn't think of it. I'm leaving because of me. Victoria, please! Let go of me! Monster. Very well. I'll claim false imprisonment. In your own house? What are you going to do now? Oh, you'll see. I'll scream. I will. What for? No need. Is that my tape? It is. And you're going to? There's no way around it. Craig, why do you do this to me? I'm sorry, Mary, but what else can I do? But again? I just got here. I have no choice. That's all you ever say. Don't you think I'm nice enough? Oh, well, that isn't it at all. Not loyal? Not interested in your work? Not sensitive to your needs? Not giving enough? No, no, quite the contrary. If you're going to be cruel to her, don't do it because of me. No, oh, of course not. Hmm. Wouldn't believe me. Oh, no. Had to make me prove it. Make me force poor Mary to... <sighs> oh, Victoria. Sometimes I wonder. A man has feelings. Feelings that get turned into thoughts, and then into words, and those words go onto paper, and eventually they live, and breathe, and walk, and talk, and strut upon the stage in their petty pace for a paying audience. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Not even after living with me for so many years. I really don't want to do this. If you do... Don't bring me back again, Greg. Mary. Just... don't. I can't stand it any longer. You're a part of me. You know that, don't you? I I'm not speaking figuratively. I give you my word when I say... 
This hurts me more than it hurts you. I'm so sorry, Mary. But she is my wife. I understand. I suppose. Greg, I feel so strange. What's happening to me? Help me. Greg, help me. Please. Greg, I feel so strange. What happened to her? She's burning brightly. Where is she? I've told you. But... where? Oh, don't you believe me yet, Victoria? Where did she go? I uncreated her. No! That poor woman. Come here. It's all right, dear. But... Sh 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 hold on to me, if you like. What have you done? It won't happen anymore, I promise you. I'll never do it again. I never would have done it in the first place if I hadn't been so lonely. It's just that... You're so perfect, Victoria. In so many ways. So impeccable. So flawless. You make me feel inferior. Really, Gregory? I, I can't help what I am. Well, maybe not, but that's why I created Mary. I, I didn't do it to insult you. I just wanted a little company, that's all. Someone who wouldn't judge me and find me wanting. Someone I could talk to, someone I could feel comfortable with, instead of... instead of like a... A worm. You do understand, don't you? This has been a small sacrifice for me and a giant step for the institution of marriage. What are you doing now? What else can I do? Return to work. Burn the midnight oil. And all for a paycheck to maintain the lifestyle you so richly deserve. Another tape, another dollar. Ah, oh, we'll work it out, Victoria. You'll see. Somehow we'll work it out. Realize that I'm inadequate compared to you, and at least in some ways, it's... Oh, it's my fault. I should have been a pair of claws scuttling across a... Victoria? What do you have there? Got your keys out of your pocket. Well, but I thought... Don't try to stop me. Well, where are you going? To the nearest lawyer. What? I'm going to have you put away for the rest of your unnatural life. Away from tape recorders. I'm going to live in this house alone from now on. In peace. Free of your diseased mind. No, Victoria. Yes, Victoria. Wait. No, wait! I can't let her go. I, I can't. I, 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 I have to stop her. But, but, but how? Recording. Uh, uh, a, a giant red-eyed elephant is standing just inside my front door, and he's mad. Uh, he isn't going to let her pass. <laughs> Something the matter? Get that elephant out of my hall! Will you stay? Yes. What did you say? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Very well. Hurry. Just a moment. Gregory. Yes, yes, yes. I can't hold the door. His trunk. He's grabbing my hand. Another second or two. There. You're mad. 
Uh, you shouldn't have said those things, Victoria. What things? You'll stay now? You think you can keep me here? You don't want me to do it again, do you? How about a herd this time? No. It's just a simple matter of recording on another tape. Well, I have plenty. I said no. I'll stay for now, Gregory. Good. But I can't promise for how long. No. You think I can live with a madman? I don't know, can you? Oh, Gregory. It doesn't have to be this way. Oh, you're so right. When we met, you were a struggling playwright. Then you had a play off, off Broadway. I was so proud. It moved to off Broadway, then to the Great White Way, and the reviews. I was so proud. Oh, we were happy then, weren't we? Ecstatic. We were a team. Onward and upward, there was no stopping you. No stopping us. I remember. And then the next play, and the next, it was like a dream. Yes. I could sit up all night, listening to you talk about your writing, reading me scenes out loud, and it was wonderful. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Mm. Neither would I. But then, something happened. I'm not sure how or when you began withdrawing from me, living in your head. You shut me out, Gregory. I thought when we moved here, we'd be close again. But the deadlines, the pages, you didn't have time for me anymore. You didn't have time for a wife. Well, I'm truly sorry for that, Victoria. But, but I think we can salvage it, don't you? Start fresh as soon as I finish the script. And will we move back to New York? Well, I... I don't see how we can afford to. Broadway isn't what it used to be. Nothing but revivals and musicals now. This is where the money is. Our future is here. What future? Well, if Hannibal's Animals gets good numbers, I'll be flooded with offers. But what I, what I really want to do is produce. Sammy says that's where the real money is. We'll form a production company, get some pilots going, and, well, by this time next year, he should be sitting pretty. We'll move to a bigger house with a, a pool, and I'll have every room wired for sound with hidden recorders. And that way I can dictate no matter where I am. And after a while, I won't have to write at all. My characters will do the work for me. I'll straighten their collars, wash behind their ears, and send them out into the world to make me famous. <laughs> can you see the future, Victoria? Can you? Thank you, Gregory. For what? I can see the future. What it would be like with you. And now I know I was right. You are insane. <laughs> oh, come now. The first chance I get, I'll have you in a padded cell. Believe it, Gregory. <sighs> I do. Well, I guess that's it. How long have you had a safe in the wall? This one? Well, only since we moved here. Before that, I had a safe deposit box. From the time we were married. What's in the envelope? Hmm? Oh, see for yourself. It has my name written on it. Victoria West. That's right. What's this supposed to mean? Well, I'll show you. A cassette tape. Your tape. What do you mean, my tape? Shall I put it back for safekeeping, Victoria? Or shall I burn it? Hmm? Which will it be? You wouldn't. Uh, the choice is yours. You want me to believe... Oh, I'm telling you, Victoria. As if I had to. Well, look at yourself, hmm? Regal, beautiful... You could have had any man you wanted. H haven't you ever wondered how you got stuck with me? That's absurd. I know who I am. I have a lifetime of memories. Oh, I know you do. I gave them to you myself. It's all here on the tape. Didn't I just tell you you're impeccable? Hmm? 
flawless. Exactly the sort of wife that I... I used to think I wanted more than anything else in the world. This is another of your tricks. Why do you suppose I was so upset when you came back before, hmm? No, not because of Mary, but because it was the first time you'd ever come back against my will. The first time... Do you think you're frightening me? No. No, I guess not. You're beyond that, aren't you? I made you too strong. I forgot to give you human frailty. Well, I guess I deserve it. It's what I asked for. I'll put it back in the safe. Give me that. Oh, you want to be careful, Victoria. Very, very careful. You tedious little bore. How could I ever have believed I loved you? Here's what I think of your childish trick. <gasps> Victoria! Do, do you know what you've done? I feel strange. Well, I, I, I'm sure you do. It, it's too late. I can't pull it out of the fire. I think I'd like to lie down. You don't, don't mean to tell me. It's true. No. Oh, it can't be true. Do you... No. Gregory. Victoria. Gregory. Vic... Oh. I told her. I told her! Oh, why wouldn't she listen to me? Recording. Her name is Victoria West. She... Huh. Better to leave well enough alone. Recording. Hmm. Her name is Mary. Mrs. Mary West. She's 36, 5 foot 3 inches tall, slimly built, brown hair, fair complexion. On the surface, a plain, quite ordinary female, yet with that quality of inner loveliness which gives a woman real beauty. A tender, gentle woman. Just now she's coming into her husband's study. Hello, Gregory. There you are. What do you have, darling? Mm, oh, nothing, really. A tape recorder. One of the tools of my trade. Will you show me how it works someday? Oh, I, I don't think it would interest you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's of no importance. Nah, no importance at all. Is the drink all right? Mm. Perfect. As always. Oh, Gregory. Mr. Gregory West. Still shy, quiet, very happy, and apparently in complete control of the Twilight Zone. A World of His Own, starring Charles Shaughnessy with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Richard Matheson. Heard in the cast were Linda Ryder, Alyssa Frayden, and Doug James. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Michael Slaybach, and Matt Sorrow. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com.
Doug James speaking.